Hello runners, this is Matt Fitzgerald for Competitor.com and I'm here today with stretching guru Phil Wharton. Phil and his father Jim Wharton are known as the body mechanics because they've helped elite runners such as Khalid Kanuchi, Dina Castor, Meb Keflazigi and others as long as as well as uh, countless mid-pack runners like you and me to overcome injuries, stay injury free and perform better. Now when you think about stretching for runners, you probably think of bending over and touching your toes, but that's not really the type of method that you teach, is it, Phil? You know, it, that's right, Matt. You know, we've been confused out there, and there's so much research and information, but I'll kind of go through an overview of flexibility as we knew it before. When my father was competing, and, you know, not to date him, but we were doing, they were doing ballistic exercises. So some of the things, if you take a classic hamstring, let's say, and you put a leg up on a hurdle or a height, and you're doing things like this where you're trying to lengthen the muscles but somewhere along the line there was pulling and tugging at those muscular attachments or you're doing things like this for that uh, groin area and you're putting stress on the area so then there was a transition a lot of it came from oriental arts like yoga those kinds of things Bob Anderson in the 19, late 1970s and his wife Jean they coined that book that we all saw with the little sweat bands around it with the illustrations fabulous stuff we knew okay we've got to do something a little bit more passively less aggressive so we went into what we call a static position so classic static position here we've all done it leg up on something but in this position we started to realize some of the biomechanical misnomers we were doing we're using our back muscles against a two joint hamstring muscle against an outer calf or gastrocnemius we thought after 10 seconds 20 seconds a minute that reflex would we would override that myotatic stretch reflex realizing we're not doing that there's no circulation there's no blood flow in movement we've got to be active and it's right brain brain or neurological so with active isolated or controlled dynamic movement we're realizing that all muscles work in pairs in order to properly lengthen the hamstring muscles we want to use the quadriceps so we have to be working the quadricep muscle in this way to relax the hamstring normally we'd be on our back so the back's not involved so it's a lot less invasive on the body and easy to do on your own great now there's been a lot of confusion and controversy even these days uh, among runners about whether you should be stretching before or after running or maybe in the middle of a run or even uh, there's some voices out there suggesting that runners shouldn't stretch at all. Uh, where do you stand on these issues? When they say don't stretch, they're right. Don't stretch. It's not just a play on words. We want to lengthen the muscles properly. To do that, we've got to have an agonist muscle involvement. When all muscles are working together in pairs like this analogy I gave, when the bicep is moving up, the tricep has to relax apply that theory of reciprocal innovation of one muscle doing their job, the other one lengthening, you're going to be in a safe zone. So, in, with that being said, to do proper range of motion exercise before and after be optimum, not everybody has that kind of time. Not everybody's a pro athlete that has all day to do this kind of stuff. So someone like a Meb or a Dina, sure, they have all day and four times a day they're doing the work before and after exercise. But what we can do is a little bit, even a 10 minute routine in the morning or after exercise, especially before a speed work where we really need it. And then in the evening when the day's done to get that metabolic return to flush the waste products, we go again. And finally, Phil, um, I wanted to ask you, be, uh, precisely because people don't have all day to stretch and a lot of runners are just resistant to doing anything besides running. If I could ask you to just pick one problem area, one really important area for runners that's a classic area where they need to work on their flexibility and mobility, uh, what, what would that be? Matt, you know, I have to say the gluteal muscles because so many of us are using the wrong muscles to run, as you know. We're using our anterior muscles, the quad. We're dominant in the quad. We're not using our hamstring or glutes. You see the Africans at the end of a marathon, they're not shuffling, you know, because they have that great glute development. You ask an Ethiopian, what's your training? They'll say, I go up. I go uphill. So the right muscles have to work. So the glute is a great one to do it standing. You could simply bring that knee to the opposite shoulder, crossing over this way on your back. You'd be doing the same thing but you're it's a little less invasive because you're controlled and you can bend the non-working leg if you have a back condition so gluteals hamstrings posterior muscles think of your muscles behind you those are the ones propelling you forward great stuff Phil Thanks now thank you now if you want to find out more information about uh, Phil Wharton's clinics DVDs books where he's going to be next go to 
wartonperformance.com. That's W-H-A-R-T-O-N performance.com. And there's also another website you'll want to check out, wartonhealth.com. And for more uh, instructional videos like the one you're watching right now, you can always come back to competitor.com. I'm Matt Fitzgerald for Competitor Running.